Praise the Lord. Praise the God. Good to be the household of faith one more time. I'm so glad they found that girl. Don, your girl. I'm so glad they found her. Praise the Lord. God spared her life. We honor the spirit of Christ. The absence of a pastor to his wife. We're so happy to be here this morning. This evening, praise God. I'm going to read one scripture, and it's needed for today. Second Chronicles seven fourteen. That's what we got to do. If you have it, you're able to stand, stand to read in the Word of God. You have it, and it says, "If my people who are called by my name." Well, humble themselves and pray. Seek my face. Turn from their wicked ways. Then I hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land. Father God, I was so grateful and thankful, Lord Jesus, for the Holy Spirit. We ask that God continue to bless our pastor and his wife. Bless the speaker of the hour tonight. May we listen with open hearts. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Amen. Anybody just glad that they were able to see another day? Yesterday could have been our last, but thanks be to God for his grace and mercy. And he didn't just bless us with another day, but he blessed us with new mercies for this day. And then allowed us to have the mindset to come out to the house of prayer, the house of worship again. We thank God for uh, Elder Thompson. I thank God for uh, all of the, the ministers and the leaders and all of you who uh, thought it not robbery to come out tonight. Um, we give honor to our pastor and his wife in their absence. And we thank God for continuing to do his great work in not just their lives, but all of our lives. We all dealing and going through something. And we all in need of prayer. Um, so we should not just be praying for the pastor, but we should be praying for each other as well. We give honor to God our Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost, and, um, excuse me, uh, I'm just glad to be here, just glad to be here. Um, we are going to look at a very uh, familiar passage of scripture um, in the book of Phil Philippians chapter 3, the book of Philippians chapter 3. Um, I put this jacket on while he was praying, and uh, I hadn't even started yet, and now I'm taking it off. <laughs> I was cold earlier, <laughs> but something about those nerves know how to warm you up. And, and if you had the right age or life circumstances has caused you to deal with hot flashes, then, then you know you know how I feel right about now. Um, and I just want to um, forgive my husband for he came in and turned the air down and had it nice and cool in here and I was too cool. I was too cool for school. Now um, I'm too hot. 
So uh, I don't know if anybody else, I know there's one sister in here, two sisters that's hot. Can I get a third sister that's hot so we can, okay. Now, if, if I, uh, Deacon Alfred, if you could please do the honors of adjusting that air back there, we would be so, so grateful. And then if I could ask, uh, do, you can just turn it down a little bit. I don't know if I messed with that one or not, but okay, y'all pray that I cool down. All right, here we go. <clears throat> um, we are in Philippians chapter three, in Philippians chapter three. Um, and how many people work today? Just, you worked? I'm not raising my hand, I, I want you to raise yours. Okay, all right, all right, okay. Okay, so we got some workers in the house. How many people are uh, just at home, you didn't do anything today, you just psh, say, hey, I'm just gonna chill out, lay my feet up, watch TV. Okay, we got one person that did that, but she is of the right age, well, she could. I'm sure she's put in her time, praise the Lord. So the rest of us did not raise our hands, even though we did not go clock in. We did have some things to do today. Um, so in order to come tonight, you might have had to give yourself, you know, just that little pep talk. You know, Lord, you've been good to me. I need to make sure I go on and make it to your house. Uh, I know I got stuff I need to do because I've been working all day and it really would be good if I could just go on at home and get started on that stuff so I'm not up late. Somebody probably even thought of that. Uh, but you decided to just come on anyhow. Um, and not just Bible study, but oftentimes we have to give ourselves pep talks in life. Life happens. Disappointments, frustration, mistakes on our part. Uh, but the thing about it is, I know one thing that all of us have done, at least one time, we kept pressing. We had to press our way to get here this evening. And if you are have had a birthday, that means you pressed your way through another year. You, you didn't allow circumstances and, and situations to cause you to give up and give out. So um, we're going to look at uh, Paul's letter to the, the church at Philippi because he gave them some encouragement as they dealt with false teachers, persecution, um, arguments in the house of the Lord, and he had to encourage himself as well. Um, Paul wrote this letter while in prison. Um, and just, as I said, he had to encourage them as he encouraged himself. He also was sending a thank you letter for all the help they had given him when he was in need. He couldn't send him any money. He couldn't take him out to eat. Uh, he couldn't put a post on Facebook. Uh, he couldn't, he couldn't, he couldn't, um, y'all remember we used to do this? We used to do this right here. He couldn't dedicate a song to him either. Y'all remember that? Y'all remember that? I want to dedicate this song. You know, he couldn't do that either. But what Paul could do is what he did. He encouraged them by sending them a letter. And what I what that 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 said to me is, you know, we always want to figure out how to pay somebody back for something they've done for us. And sometimes we will come to the sorry conclusion that, well. I ain't got nothing to give. But there's nothing better than an encouraging word from the Lord to show our gratitude for the things that people have done for us when we were in need. So um, I want us to look at um, chapter 3 of this letter that is sent to the church at Philippi, chapter 3, and we're going to begin reading at that 12th verse. Chapter 3. Verse 12. 
And um, tonight we're just going to simply talk about keep pressing. Keep pressing. If you think about uh, if we, we experience some type of uh, fall or scratch and it starts to bleed, there's one thing that they tell us to do in order to stop the bleeding. They tell us to make sure we do what? Apply pressure. So I want, I want us to think about something. Uh, in order for us to deal with the hurts of life, we always got to do something. We got to always apply pressure. Look, in this life, we're going to have trouble. But God told us to be a good cheer because he's already overcome all of that. So, so in order to get through a situation that is applying pressure, the only way we're going to get through it is to apply what? Pressure to it. So what I want to tell somebody is if you're feeling like you're in a pressure situation now, you got to press back. Don't just allow the pressure to press you, but you got to press back. Now, if God opens a door for us, in order to walk through the door, we've got to do what? We got to push or press. So all I'm here to just remind us is we've got to continue to apply pressure and press on. Let's look what Paul says. And I know this is a familiar text, but... The prayer is that we get something out of it tonight. In verse 12, he says, not that I have already attained. In other words, I hadn't got it yet. I'm not there yet. Now, we do know this. When Paul heard Jesus speaking to him on the Damascus road, Damascus road, he did attain Christ but he didn't attain the prize. He was, he, he was committed to God and he turned his life around from persecuting the church. But here he's saying, look, I ain't got it yet. He, he goes on and he tells him, he says, I have, I have not uh, uh, already attained it. He says, or am I already what? He said, I hadn't perfected this. Now, perfection in prior verses was dealing with salvation. But perfection in this verse is dealing with the perfection of, of having it all together, doing everything right. In other words, I'm encouraging you, but I'm also encouraging myself. I don't want you to think that I'm telling you this, all of the things that I told you about, 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 about unity and about loving each other in the prior chapters. I, I'm, not, I'm not telling you that I'm without fault, in other words. I've done a lot of things that, that weren't right. And even since I've been saved, I've gotten in a couple of disagreements, even with Peter. He says, so I'm not perfect. He, sa he says, he says uh, but... Even though I'm not perfect, he said, you know one thing that I'm going to do? He says, but I what? I press, I press on. In other words, I know that the enemy is pressuring me. The enemy is always pressing us. He knows he's fighting a losing fight, but we got to remember that we're fighting a, 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 a winning battle, one that's already been won. It's a fixed fight. Listen. If he knows that he's already lost, but he can keep applying pressure to us, then guess what we must do as believers who already know that we won the fight? The least we can do is press on. So if I sit back and I allow somebody who already know they lost to press me, to cause me to give up, there's something wrong with me. It's three things that we know that the enemy applies pressure for to try to do. And the, what are those three things? To what? To steal, kill, and destroy. He tries to steal it. 
He tries to steal our joy. He tries to steal our peace. He tries to steal, I, I, he tries to steal victory. But he cannot because the victory does not belong to him. So he applies the pressure because he, he says, well, if I can steal it, then maybe they'll give up. If I can't steal it, then what's next? He says, then I'm going to do what to it? I'm going to try to what? Kill it. If I can't just all out kill it, if I can't kill their will, then what I'm going to try to do is just to destroy it. But the devil is a lie tonight. Because what we're not going to do is give up. What we're not going to do is stay in the same place that we are in right now. He says, I'm not perfect. I have not attained it, but I'm going to press on. Somebody say press on. So he then he says, he says that I may lay hold of, that I may grab that for which Christ Jesus has also laid what? Hold of me. Christ got me. He's got hold of me. And I'm going to keep holding on to Christ. He then tells me, he says, brethren, I do not count myself. Here he is again, still, still saying, look, I'm still, I got struggles too. Sometimes, you know what, when I pray, I cry. Sometimes when situations come up, I don't always pray first like I should. Sometimes I deal with a little bit of doubt too. Sometimes I get hurt. Sometimes I throw my hands up. Sometimes I say, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do anything with these kids that you gave me, Lord. He says that we all deal with some type of struggle that makes us want to maybe think about giving up. But I press on. So he says, brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended. But one thing, he had a single mindset. But this one thing, I think of another one thing. When David said he had a one thing too, y'all remember what it was? He says, but this one thing I desire, that I will stay where? In the house of the Lord all my way. All of my days. Yeah, you might be struggling. Maybe you had some bad thoughts earlier today about, well, you know, I'm old now. <sighs> well, you know, I'm sick now. Well, you know, I'm broke now. Well, you know, I don't work anymore. Well, you know, I'm no longer the boss on the job. That hit me when I had to give it up. I'm just, I'm just Calandra now. What am I going to do with life? But he says, you know, the one thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to stay connected to the Lord. That's all he was saying. That nothing else matters because as long as I'm connected to God and Jesus, then I've already won. It, no reason for me to panic. No reason, no reason for me to press the brakes. I just got to keep on going. The one thing that I do, look at it. He says, I'm forgetting those things which I wear are behind me. Now, if I'm pressing, there's, it's impossible to press, which is forward, and then do what? Look back. Because if I'm trying to press forward and look back at the same time, guess where I'm going? Nowhere. So he says, pass. Those folks hurt me. I got to let that go. I hurt folks. I got to let that go. I missed opportunities, Lord. I got to let that go. I'm a, I'm, I, this is, this is Paul. Paul was of the Benjamin tribe. 
he says, I got to let that go too, because it doesn't matter what my folks did or who I'm connected to. I got to let that go. He says, I got to let go societal, uh, uh, societal accolades. I got to let all that go. He says, I got to let go my successes too, because the good things that we do in the Lord, if we, if we, we grab hold to those, they will puff us up. The past will hold us back. So what we will end up doing is paralyzing ourselves to where we can't press. We'll be puffed, but not pressing. We'll be stuck and paralyzed with fear to go forward because of what we did or what happened in the past, but we won't press. So he says, I got to forget those things which are behind me and reaching what? Forward to those things which are where? Ahead. You can't go backwards and you can't press at the same time. It's impossible. And he tells us how to do it by letting go. Let go of everything in the past. The only reason we should think back is to think. That's it. That's the only time. This, me and these glasses, Chad, don't get mad. I might need more. Okay. Forward to those things which are ahead. Then listen, he says it again in verse 14. He says, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Let me just say this. When Paul wrote this in, in chapter 1, he, he, he tells them, he says, look, Here's where I find myself. He tells them, if, 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 I, if I live, then it's good for y'all. It's good because I'll still be able to lab labor in the work of the Lord. He says, but I'm tired because I've been dealing with persecution. That same persecution that I did, now I'm having to deal with it. And it's worse than what I did. He says, I've been, I'm being persecuted for Christ. He says, and I'm okay with that. I really am. He says, but I'm coming to a place in my life where it's starting to wear me down. Is anybody in here at a place in their life where you can, you just, just being real, saying life is wearing me down? Even though I'm trying to do right. Even though I'm, I'm, I'm drawing and getting closer to my God, it's still starting to wear me down. It's some situations that I know that I have in my own life that I have to continue to check myself and say, Lord, I'm tired. There were some times when I was sick that I, you know, just being real because I knew that I was connected to my Savior. I said, Lord, if you take me out, I know where I'm going. But, but, but there's some things that I know that I still got work to do on this side. So what Paul is saying, it's good for me to stay, but I'm all right if it's time to leave. And what he was talking about is not, not just the prize here on earth. He's talking about... Hey, I'm ready to rest too. All of us want some rest. He was talking about rest on this side, but Paul also was talking about his eternal rest that was the, that is to come. Somebody, and I know when we start to get a little bit older and we start dealing with physical things in our body, not being able to do what you used to could do, it can make you start thinking about taking a rest. I'm just ready to bow out of this one. But Paul says, I can't bow out because God has been too good to me. He has brought me through too many things for me to just take a bow now. And so he tells them as, as well as himself, he says, I'm going to keep pressing because I know something's coming. I'm going to keep pressing because I know that my rest, my eternal rest is coming. 
And what I don't want to hear is I don't want God to, to get to the seat of judgment and for them to say, servant, I don't know you. For God to say, you know, you gave up too soon. You had more work to do, but you were too busy complaining and you wouldn't press. Two things that cannot be done at the same time. We can't complain and press at the same time. Pressing is a mindset. And complaining is a mindset. So if you press, you can't complain. And if you complain, you can't press. We've got to pick which one we're going to do. He says, I'm going to keep pressing. Because that's, I'm going to gain something out of pressing. He said, I'm going to get something out of this. But if I complain, I'm not going to get anything. I'm just going to be tired, broke, busted, and still disgusted if I keep on complaining. So he says, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. We all have been given a call. The question is, will we answer? Paul realized that I can't go anywhere but straight. I can't stay where I am. I've got to continue to do the work of the Lord. Well, what is the work of the Lord? First of all, the work of the Lord, we're like reporters. We all, every day, we should have something fresh to say about what God has done. Well, today he gave me new mercies. Yesterday, that was old. Well, today he allowed me to have my right mind. He, today, I might not have all of my health, but I got a reasonable portion of it. Today, I might be in pain, but I realized that I could be paralyzed. Today, I'm reporting live for what he did for me today. So, 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 we all got work to do to tell of his goodness, to tell of his faithfulness, to tell of how he comes in the middle of the night and he comforts me when nobody else can, when nobody else sees the tears, when nobody else knows of the disappointments and fears. I've got God with me. It's work to be done. That's why we got to keep pressing. It's much work to be done. People are hungry, not just for food, but they're hungry to hear the word of God. People are hungry. They want to hear the truth of God. They're tired of the lies that man has been telling them for all these years about what we can't do and what we have to do. Listen, God, man didn't make us. Morgan, man didn't make you. They can't tell you what your limitations are. Man didn't make you evangelists. They can't tell you what you should be doing at this age. So all I'm here to say is keep pressing. And finally, I want to tell us there was another person who had to press. He was born 100% man and 100% God at the same time to a virgin Mary. They talked about his daddy. They talked about where he was from, but he kept pressing. When they said he was from, oh, oh, you know, you know who his daddy is? That carpenter boy. He kept pressing. When they said, yeah, you know, he was, his mama was supposed to be a virgin, but she got married at 13 and she was already pregnant. Y'all figure that out. He kept pressing. When his mother and father, his earthly mother and father came to get him out the temple. He said, I must be about my father's business. He kept pressing. He didn't let mom and daddy just, just uh, tell him what God had already told him to do. He kept pressing. He kept pressing. He, 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 he picked out 12 disciples. And even when he had to rebuke some, he still kept pressing. Even when they didn't understand all of his teachings, he kept pressing. Even when one of them sold him out, he still kept pressing. And even when they, 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 they arrested him and put him through a mock trial, he never said a mother word. He just kept on 
pressing. Yes, he might have wanted to quit. How do we know? He went to the Garden of Gethsemane, which means a crushing or pressing place. And when he got there, he took three of his tightest folk with him. They couldn't pray with him. He still kept pressing. He prayed one time. He prayed two times. And the third time, he said, you know what? I'm going to press on and I'm going to do the will of my father. He pressed all the way to a cross. They beat him unrecognizably. He pressed on. He said to them when they lifted him up, he didn't get upset. He said, what? Yo, lift me up. It's all good. Because if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. What am I saying? Even when they talk about us, even when they persecute us, it's okay. I'm going to keep pressing because then God can get the glory out of my life. Keep pressing. Lift it high. He says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. That's pressing, y'all. That's forgiving folk that don't deserve forgiveness. But hey, we didn't either. Thanks be to God, he stayed on the cross. They pushed him in his side. Blood and water came running down. He pressed. He didn't allow them to kill him. He gave up the ghost. He pressed. And then not one day, but two days, three days, he was dead. But what did he do? He got up. He pressed his way up with all power in his hands. And the same power that he has, he gave it to us through his Holy Spirit. Anybody going to keep pressing? We got a reason to press. Because the fight is fixed. It's already been won. All we got to do is stay in the race and cross the finish line. That's all Paul was saying. I'm pressing my way to the finish line. You can't get to the finish line if you're looking backwards. You're going to stay right there. Anybody want to get to the finish line? Anybody? Anybody want to get to the finish line? Keep pressing. Tell your neighbor, keep pressing. I got to keep pressing. No matter what comes our way. Keep pressing. Praise him. Praise his holy name. For he is. He is sovereign. He's all-knowing. He's here, there, and everywhere at the same time. And he answers all of our calls when they come in. He ain't like man. You know, man answers, but they might not have the solution. But when God answers, he's got the answer. He knows how to fix it. You call me, I might not be able to help you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. We love you. Sing it. Oh, oh. 
breaths me now, my Savior. I come to you. I need the Lord. I need you every hour. I need you. Oh, bless me now. My Savior, I come to Thee. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes, we need you, Lord. 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 We love 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 you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, your heart fixing a mind regulator. You are here today, Lord. You're the peace of prayer's all understanding. The doors are closing on faith. You open the door for us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Nothing's too hard for you, Lord. Hallelujah. You know, uprising and our down sitting. You know, our thought far off, Lord, Lord. Keep us by your power, Lord Jesus. Please keep us. Protect us, Lord God, against the enemy, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you for being a prayer answering God. Hallelujah. Mm, when man says no, you say yes. Ah, you take pleasure in the prosperity of your servants, O oh God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your keeping power. Mm. Hallelujah, friend in trouble. Your friend's still closer than a mother, O oh God. Thank you. Hallelujah. Oh, bless your name forever. Mm, mm, mm. How precious you are to us. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Lord. Let's stand for discipleship. If you're here tonight, you don't know the Lord if you pardon your sins, now's the time. A lot of people wait on tomorrow. Tomorrow they may never come. Amen. Mm, 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 mm. He woke you up early this morning. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated. God bless you. Hallelujah. Yes.
Well, let's remember all of our announcements. Lay them whole close to our minds and our hearts so we won't forget them. Remember, every Tuesday night at 6 o'clock, we have Sunday School Review with the Thompsons, Elder and Mother Thompson. So uh, there's the number. If you need it, get in touch with me, and I will give it to you. I'll send it to your phone. Uh, next. Remember, we still have our FNBC food pantry. Um, let's continue to give so we can be a blessing. And um, I know we were talking about uh, fixing up some boxes and taking out to um, help feed those who are in need. Um, off of 82, we had mentioned getting together and, and fixing some boxes up. So if you have food um, and you want to purchase some and bring some uh, perishable items, please do so. Please do so. Next. Remember this Saturday at 9 o'clock, um, the women will be going to Cracker Barrel for our uh, life-changing experiences, women's ministry meeting. Cracker Barrel, 9 o'clock. They have some really good pancakes. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> so uh, come and bring somebody with you. I'm going to try and grab me up some people. All right. Um, next And while the women are at Crackle Barrel, our men um, will be having uh, the first day of their men's conference is Saturday. They will be eating breakfast at 8 o'clock sharp. And then they will begin their sessions at 9. Um, I think it's two sessions, if I'm not mistaken. And then on Sunday, they will conclude with um, being in charge of services for 8 and 11 o'clock. Amen. 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 Had to train them early. We train them to do all other kind of all other stuff. Amen. Let's let's show them how to praise dance and all that stuff instead of all the other stuff that we uh, that we that we teach them. I'm just I I, I am just simply saying uh, it's the truth. All right. Our, our kids know how to do all kind of stuff at, at, at two and three. They on Facebook and TikTok doing all kind of stuff that is not godly. And um, we need to teach them godly habits and practices at a young age like they taught us. <clears throat> and put that on Facebook and TikTok instead of that other mess. Okay, I'm sorry. All right, next. Okay, all pastor support members. Let me let me say this. All members, including myself. Um there's a pastor support meeting next Wednesday at five o'clock. Um they're asking all of us, all of us who are members of friendship, that includes myself. So I'm going to be better and make sure that I'm at the meetings because um, he is our pastor, right? So all of us should be showing up to support. And um, I think we're going to have a meeting with all pastor support members immediately following both 8 and 11 o'clock service. That's going to be on the announcements. Um, thank you all so much. Next. All right. Remember, they are giving free um, breast exams next Saturday at the um, community center here. Right? It starts. It's cut off. It starts at. Is that eight or nine? Can y'all tell up there in the booth? What time does it start? Nine, okay, from nine to 11. So please come out, especially if you um, do not have health care and you need, you need to get checked. So should not be an excuse. Let's make sure we share this with people that we know who are in need. 
Amen. Next. Oh, you have to make an appointment. That's important too. All righty. Um, let us stand. Um, um, Elder, will you give the closing prayer, please? Let us pray, beloved. Dear Heavenly Father, we're grateful and thankful you met us here tonight. We ask you, God, continue to bless our pastor and his wife. Bless every family represented here right now. Remember Mother Stanley, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Ella Pitts, dear Lord God, look upon my son, his family, oh God, down Jacksonville, his wife, uh, aunt passed away. Strengthen them, Lord Jesus. Dear Lord God, this country is in trouble and we need revival. Thank you, God, for the Holy Spirit. Let the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer, we pray. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you.